Hey guys, Wes here, and as you can see, it's an early morning here at the warehouse, but I've got the brand new 2019 Honda 450L next to me, and we're really excited about this bike. It's a brand new bike to the market. It's the first performance dual sport that's came from the Japanese manufacturers, and so we're super excited to check this thing out, but as you guys probably know, there's a ton of media out there already on this bike, first ride reviews and first impression videos, but what we wanted to do is something a little different. So we want to know what kind of impact this is going to have on the market. And I think one of the best ways to check that out is put it head to head with the king of the market. And that's probably the Husqvarna FE501. So we're going to load this thing up, drive down to our dealership, and I'm going to meet Chance down there. He's actually got a brand new FE501 ready to go. So we're going to put these things head to head and let you guys know how they do. So let's get going. better than dual sports and coffee. Okay guys, so you can see that we just made it down to our dealership. Um, Chance is actually already down here. He's got the FE501 ready to go. So let's go inside and check this place out. All right guys, so I'm here with Chance and he's actually gonna be helping us out with this video. Um, he's actually got the brand new FE501 ready to go and he's gonna tell us a little bit about that before we get going. Yeah, so last year I had to compare the 2018 FE501 with the KTM 500. Some awesome dirt bikes, a good comparison. And if you wanted a plated dirt bike, those were the only real two options we had. However, good news from Honda is that they came out with the CRF450L Super excited to get this out on the trail with the 450L and see how they compare. Cool, so we're just gonna get geared up and get rolling. guys you can see this is a beautiful day for some dual sporting and we are finally out on the road um, I've got chance with me and we just barely left the dealership so that is the big story of these bikes is you don't have to trailer or load them in your truck to get to your destination you can ride right out of your garage right from your starting point and be completely 100% legal so that is the big story of this brand new Honda CRF450L. It is the first performance off-road dual sport bike that has came from the Japanese manufacturers. And that's why everybody's so excited. The performance dual sport thing is something that KTM and Husqvarna already have figured out. And they've been doing it for a number of years now. So we're excited to get another option and have another bike that we can choose from in this in this riding category but actually my fuel light just came on so we're gonna pull into this gas station and fuel these bikes up all right chance so while we're at the gas pump uh why don't we talk about fuel tank capacity on this bike it comes with a 2.01 gallon tank uh, i just put one and a half gallons in so that tells me the fuel light's going to come on with about a half gallon left um, and with two gallons estimations are you're going to get anywhere from 80 to 100 miles now that may not sound like a ton for uh, a bike but this bike's a dual sport bike um, 
and that's really what it's meant for you don't you know you're not gonna you're not gonna crank out big miles like you would on a cruiser touring uh different bike really so one thing though is is we are gonna try and take this thing light adventure riding and it sounds like ims is working on a tank for this bike somewhere around three gallons and that would get you up over the 100 mile range 130 maybe 150 if you're sipping gas and real easy on the throttle uh so we're really excited for that. What about your bike? My bike is coming with a two and a half gallon tank. It's nice because that's about as many miles as I can put on it in stock form without I don't know, other things breaking on me on myself personally. Uh, they have options for larger tanks up towards that five gallon mark, but in stock form, that's just too many miles to go through in a day. All right, so with all that said, let's get back on the bikes and head towards some dirt. So Chance, something else I wanted to bring up about this gas tank, as well as doing some reading online, uh, it sounds like Honda said that producing the titanium tank is actually cheaper than the molded plastic option uh, was, just because they can stamp this tank out, weld it together, and it's done. So uh, just because it's quicker to produce it makes it cheaper in the long run. All right, so Chance, let's talk about price on these bikes. The Honda 450L comes in at 10.4, 10.399, and that does sound like a lot, but you gotta remember what you're getting with that bike. It's a full performance 450 that is set up, plated from the factory, and pretty much everything you'd want in this category. What do you think? That's, that's better than my price. My price is a little more expensive, coming in just at 11.3. So it's just after, just past that $11,000 mark. So it is expensive, but again, I do have a hydraulic clutch. I know oh. you're jealous. Yeah, this cable one, uh, it feels okay, but we'll see at the end of the day. So my bike is $900 cheaper than yours, but what does that mean? What am I not getting? What are you getting for that price? Well, for the specs, a lot of similarities. Wheelbase, we're exactly the same. Seat height, we're within an inch. Uh, I do have two inches more of ground clearance. So maybe that's worth $1,000. Uh, <laughs> and work. like you said, the hydraulic clutch, you also have some flag, fancy flag hand guards that are gonna protect your hands. That's and you think that you think that for this price, Honda would have maybe thrown something in, but at the end of the day, if I'm being honest, right. I'm putting a set of wraparounds on this bike no matter what, so I'd be pulling those stock handguards off regardless. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll definitely take these off and throw some wraparounds on there. Um, but as for motors, yeah, true, I'm about 510 cc's. You're coming in just at that, what, 449? Yeah, it's a 450, but hey, it's a Honda, man. <laughs> this thing rips. Again, they come with decent tires, at least for the road and what we're doing right now. Once we get into some dirt and possibly some sand, I'll definitely want some Dunlop D606s on there. All right, so Chance, while we're on the street, I want to bring up some of the characteristics and and add-ons that Honda put into this bike to make it more comfortable and street capable. So starting from the front back, the engine actually has covers on both sides of it that are dampened and they're plastic covers. That actually does a lot to cut down on engine noise and vibration. And actually it also helps protect the engine, which is awesome. Uh, moving your way back, the counter shaft sprocket and the rear sprocket are both dampened which is huge. That's something that nobody's done for the dual sport market. And uh, I'm really noticing it while we're riding the street. The last thing that I wanna bring up is the urethane filled swing arm. And that really just serves the same purpose. It cuts down on the vibration and just makes pounding out those street miles a lot more doable. What do you think, Chance? Uh, I'm a little jealous on the road. This bike doesn't come with any plastic covers or urethane filled swing arms. It's uh, quite a bit of vibration. It's not horrible, but it's not very fun. 
The seat's oh, really thing not is, comfortable. This thing is buttery smooth. Uh, and I guess the only thing street worthy is the tires. They're TKC80s, which are okay on the road, but I'm gonna be a little worried once we once we hit the dirt, which is just coming you know up what? actually. Yeah, enough talk about that. Let's get these things off the road and see what they can actually do. Okay, Chance, so now that we're finally on the dirt, I think we've given these guys plenty of information. I think it's time to have some fun and really see what these bikes can do off-road. Off Heck yeah, I'm all for that. Right, guys so we are here at the end of the day full day riding on these two impressive super fun awesome bikes the 450L and the FE501 uh, Chance and I have been swapping back and forth and uh, talking about these bikes just having a blast the whole time so there are some differences that we notice in these two bikes um, but I do have to say that Honda's first take on a true performance dual sport bike uh, added to a market that's very strong already it holds its own to say the least there are some things that I think uh, put it above the FE501 the current Husky uh, in some areas um, but let's talk about those first chance what are your initial thoughts thoughts. Uh, as for the Husky, the changes they made from 18 to 19 in the suspension, just minor changes, it was a world of difference. This thing, I could pound any whoop I wanted, I could hit anything I wanted to. Suspension was awesome, it soaked everything up. I never bottomed it out and it tracked straight through everything. It was quite pleasant. Um, motor was great. Uh, the accessories that had come on it, they held up for the most part. I was a little disappointed in the little rear fender tail light thing. A little weak, uh, and for eleven, eleven and a half thousand dollars that you're gonna be paying for this bike, I wish you would, I don't know, have a little beefier setup back here. Maybe some LED lights, turn signals, and headlight. Hey, that's how they make it so light, dude. It's true. Um, yeah, that's definitely one that definitely brings me into one of the strong suits of the Honda. This thing is uh, set up right for that type of thing. It's got full aluminum subframe, clear back to the LED light, tail light, uh, and along with the license plate mount, it's very sturdy. It's all very solid back here. It's not going to get sucked in the rear tire. Just the overall fit and finish of this thing is top notch. Um, some of the other things that I think put the Honda above the Husky in the areas that I want to cover are uh, the dampening products that they did. So the dampened front sprocket, rear sprocket, the uh, urethane filled swing arm, the engine covers, all those combined. Oh my gosh, this bike does not vibrate. It's so smooth. Uh, so so comfortable to ride especially on the street it doesn't vibrate um, you don't notice it as much off-road because you're just having uh, a ton of fun going through rough stuff but yeah the street it's so comfortable compared to the husky yeah so my take on it is if I just need a bike to gets plated to get me from trail to trail so I can do the gnarliest trails I can find to ride dirt bike trails all day I would have to go with the Husky. You know what? You, I agree. The it's not that comfortable on the road. Well, this thing, I mean, it reminds me of my Harley. I hate to say it, but like, dude, it is like. Uh, uh, but it's enough to get you to the trailhead, and then you have a great time after that. And that's really part of this this market: connecting trails legally. 
and that's what it does so well. If I was gonna, I don't know, if I needed a bike so I could commute once or twice a week and then go hit trails on the weekend, that 450L is gonna be an awesome bike. And gnarly trails at that. This thing did everything that we asked today. We rode big whoop G out trails that uh, were gnarly. It's probably as, as gnarly as this bike is gonna see. Um, and it did it all impressively. I will say that the suspension, even though it's the same components as the 450R, they're just uh, retuned a little, resprung for off-road riding, obviously. Uh, while they're impressive, you can get it set up for this type of riding. The Husky handled the big, the big G outs a little bit better. Wes, agreeing with you on the suspension, the CRF, it is a little un undersprung. And that might just be my uh, big body talking, but uh, I was bottoming it out a little too much, especially in the whoops. But even on these small, I don't know, anything small, I was, I was using the full length of that suspension. Um, the Husky did hold it, hold itself up a little bit better in the stroke. So if you are a bigger guy, that is one thing to consider. If you are going to ride some gnarlier trails, you're going to have to re at least respring the bike, at least the 450L. But other than that, these are awesome bikes. I agree. Um, I think in the thousand dollars that you're saving with this bike, you could easily get your suspension set up and dialed for whatever you need. All right, guys, you can see we're back at the warehouse now, and on the ride home, we had a chance to discuss more in depth some of the points of these bikes. One thing we wanted to cover and talk more about is the engines on these two bikes. Now, as you as you probably know, they're both big bore bikes. They make a ton of power, and they're a lot of fun, but we want to give you our thoughts on these engines. Yeah, so the 501, it makes more power as expected. Uh, however, the way that power comes on is a little bit different. Um, it's a slower revving motor, giving you a feel of a more linear transition. The power is easy to use on the road or on the dirt. Um, it allows you to rev out that motor a little bit more and it, it's fun to ride. Definitely, I think, I mean, what was your downside of that motor though? Uh, downside definitely would have to be the vibrations. You, you really feel it on the road. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's uh, kind of a 180 from what we noticed on this bike. It's a completely different way to deliver the power. So obviously they've done a lot to smooth this thing out. It's very smooth uh, compared to the Husky, but it's definitely a 450. It makes a lot of power. It's a ton of fun. But the characteristic of this power is it's quick to rev, very fast to rev. That makes the bike feel light. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's just definitely different than the Husky. Uh, one of the negatives that we found of this Honda is just the on-off throttle response. That initial blip of the throttle is it's rough and aggressive and hard to get used to and it makes you feel like a beginner if you're riding in slower traffic and trying to be smooth. Um, that's just one of the things both Chance and I noticed right off the bat of this Honda. Once you get off-road, it's not so bad. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take both these bikes and set them up for light adventure riding. Um, and that's gonna entail a lot of parts and accessories on these things. And if you guys are curious about parts and accessories, check out our website. We've got a bunch of stuff listed and that's only gonna continue to grow as we learn more about these bikes and get some more time on the seats. Also, let us know if you guys like this type of review and if we left anything out, comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Hey, my favorite part of this Honda, Chance, you could have used these a little today. The very flexy, very bendy blinkers.